What's up, everybody? Timber Builds here, bringing you my top 10 tips to build better and ground it today. These are not going to be in any specific order, but I'm going to kind of start off more general uh, mega building advice. Uh, and this would maybe apply to more than just grounded. And then once we get through those kind of general tips, we'll get into some of the more grounded specific game mechanics and some of the things I like to focus on from there to make bigger and better builds. Tip number one. This one is a fairly simple, uh, easy one to do, but is often overlooked by newer players and people that want to get into building. This is what you want to think of first. As soon as you start a playthrough, you want to stick to your ABCs. And what I mean by that is always be collecting. And as cheesy and corny as that sounds, Grounded is a game uh, that requires a lot of materials. There's a lot of grinding. I think everyone that has played the game has experienced that. And when you get into building, that is elevated to an even higher level. You need a lot of materials to upgrade weapons and armor and stuff. But if you want to build all the decor items that are offered, you need every single item in the game at any given time. And the last thing, personally, that I like to do in the middle of a build is have to go collect some random ant parts because I'm trying to build a, a candle or a stuffed bug mount or whatever it is. It's very distracting and difficult to be right in the middle of something and then have to run out of materials. And it kind of can throw off your flow. But more importantly, it just makes building easier, uh, especially in Grounded. And this can be applied to just about any survival game that you want to mega build in overall. But Grounded specifically, all the items are used in different decor, um, the walls and everything. And some of the resources, such as lint and the charcoal, respawn every five days and so if you're not continually staying up on those things you're going to run out and you're just going to be stuck and dead in the water for a while and not really have to do anything if you're trying to focus on your build so you always want to be collecting as much material as material as you can my goal for every base is to have a chest with every item in it that's a little excess excessive for some but you can kind of think of it as it'd be nice to have a chest for tier three bugs and tier two bugs and tier one bugs and have all the different parts and pieces, have all the different resources collected so that random time that you need it, you don't have to leave your base and go collect it. Uh, you've already got it there. And the way I like to think of this specifically is anytime I leave my base to go collect a specific material or maybe farm a specific bug, I'm always just going to try to fill up my entire inventory with anything and everything that I come across. You're never going to complain about having too much of something other than you might need a couple more chests, but it's always rough to go backwards and have not enough of what you're looking for. So you want to collect and stock up on as much as you can. And the earlier you're doing that in the game, the better it makes it for your long-term mega builds. Tip number two, cycle your day and nights at 1800 on the dot. I know this is a very simple and straightforward tip, but it's a really important one, especially for people grinding through the story and doing things while they're building. It's really easy to get distracted and forget to cycle day and nights. But one, the game's easier to play in the day. It's just easier to see. It's a really dark game overall and can be a little spooky uh, if you're going through the nights. But if you're trying to get things like lint or ash cement, you need to be on top of cycling those days and nights because it just shortens the time in between each of those things respawning. So although it's a very simple tip, it's a very easily overlooked thing, and it does apply to many other games outside of Grounded. But more so in Grounded, those high-level materials, everyone complains about lint, everyone complains about charcoal, toenails, those sort of things. you got to cycle your day and nights like a religion. Uh, to stay on top of it and that is going to be the way to maximize the amount of materials you're getting so you can build really big cool bases tip number three use more lighting this is probably the best tip that i can give you if you're working on builds and you just feel like your build isn't coming to life every build that i ever make looks super boring and un uninteresting until i add the lighting the lighting tends to be a later detail for me. I add a lot of the early on details and shapes and mess with things. And then I sort of go through with a final pass and add lighting to everything. And this is where you can really use lighting to enhance the design, where you can use it to light up certain details. It can draw your attention to areas of interest in your build. But more than anything, lighting and grounded specifically from what I've personally experienced, is that it takes kind of a normal build that doesn't necessarily feel all that interesting and it can completely bring it to life. And that's just because they added in 
the different lighting colors, you can change the saturations and intensity of the lighting, and there's just so much customization. And that included um, or added upon all the little fun things you can do with lighting by recessing them behind walls. You can put them in floors underneath and create an underglow. There's so many little things you can do with lighting. And this is where you may need to just look at uh, base tours on YouTube, but find some other people that have done lighting. Look at a couple of my videos. Great example is like the top of the pagoda. The whole thing about the top of the pagoda is creating an interesting lighting effect. And it completely transformed the way the top of that base felt, it creates this cool lantern effect. It's got backlighting, different colors, just adds like spice to the whole build. It makes it interesting, but more than that, it takes sort of a flat, boring build and creates that depth that you really want. And so if you use more lighting, even if you're not very good at it in the beginning, it's going to help your builds look a hundred times better. And it takes a boring, bland build and turns it into something really interesting. And you can also mess with the coloring to create a different vibe of the entire thing. And you can create a spooky building, um, something more a little ominous by using red lighting, or you can just use like white lighting and it brightens everything up and it really can highlight certain details on your build. And so I always suggest if you think you're using enough lighting, you probably wanna use a little bit more lighting. And it just overall is gonna help all of your builds really come into their own and create more detail and they'll just overall look way more interesting than if you didn't have enough lighting. Tip four, use multiple materials on your walls. This is often overlooked. I see a lot of bases that are just like grass boxes or weed stem boxes or even if they're a really interesting unique shape it's all the same material and that tends to make builds look more one-dimensional. They look flat and something as simple as taking a box and adding a pattern with a different material, such as my sandbox castle, uh, can completely change the entire base. It can look so much more interesting, even though it's still just a flat wall, all you're doing is placing a secondary material in that build. It can add a lot of detail and depth and character to a build. And it can really take, especially if you have very large walls, if you're building a very big base, having one wall that's all the same materials, that doesn't have any windows or any change at all, just creates a flat one-dimensional build overall. And this is the same thing in regular design for building. So it's a great way in this game to sort of emulate buildings. Many times you don't have to make massive changes, you don't have to do anything crazy, but if you change up the material here and there, it's just enough of a difference between the two materials that it can really elevate the design and create a fun style for the build overall. Easy to overlook, easy to overdo, but at the end of the day, use more materials. They look really good together. All grass buildings, all weed stem buildings, all mushroom buildings, all ash cement buildings, without anything else in them, they tend to look a little bit more boring. They're one dimensional, but just adding a simple thing like a weed stem window to an ash cement building, they both sort of have some ash cement, has some of the weed stem, and then the weed stem can sort of blend itself into that design with the ash cement, or vice versa, mushroom with ash cement adds a very interesting contrast to the build. And there's also weed stem and grass builds, and so mess with the different materials and experiment with the different styles that the game offers. And if you tend to build in one material, try a new material out. Build your base or build a portion of your base in something totally different and see how it can sort of create a more interesting style of the base overall and add a lot of interesting details. Tip number five. This is more of a general building and design idea, but use precedent images. As someone with an architectural background, the first step to every single project that I ever did for school, that I ever did for the architectural firm that I worked for, was to search up precedent images. And all that is is you're looking for references, you're looking for ideas. Nothing we do in the world currently is 100% original. Everything looks like something else. It starts as one thing that you kind of have this great idea of and then it ultimately transforms it. But without those kind of starting ideas, it can be very overwhelming in design to kind of start from just a blank canvas. And so for me, I'm always, if I want a castle, I'm gonna look up an image of a castle. If I wanna build maybe a Mayan temple, then I'm gonna look up a temple and sort of give me a frame of reference 
to kind of start the design. And even if it doesn't end up looking anything like those things that I built, the idea isn't to copy the image one for one. And oftentimes in building and video games, you're never gonna recreate something 100%. Most of the building systems in games, especially grounded, are gonna limit you to some of the ways that you can build. And so it's a little bit more difficult to copy something one to one, but you can often use that original idea that first precedent you're looking at is a frame of reference to just get you started, to get the creative juices flowing. And then from there, you can kind of move forward and sort of customize the build to be more interesting and more like what you're looking for. Or you make changes because the game doesn't allow you to physically build that exact thing. But it often gets rid of that like analysis paralysis phase where it's like, you don't know where to start. You don't know what you want to build. If you have an idea, you want to build something but you don't know where to start just look up images of different things on google it's that simple and then that gives you a place a starting point to go, to move forward from and then you don't get stuck in this like i don't know where to go i don't know what to build how do you come up with these really cool ideas every base i start with starts as a, a simple box and then through looking at images on the internet and other designs look up base tours and stuff you kind of get ideas of different bases that other people have made and you, you like one idea and you can find a way to implement that idea into your build. And then it's different because it's on your build. Yes, you can copy one thing. I'm, I post videos on the internet specifically so people copy what I do. I come up with interesting, unique designs and I hope that you take those designs and put them into your base so I can see all the crazy things that you come up with because you're probably going to use it in a slightly different way than I use it in. And just by seeing maybe one of my ideas or something else on the internet, it can spark a whole build, but it, it gets you past that point of like, I don't know where to start. It's really difficult for me specifically to start with a completely blank design. And so starting with some reference images really can help you sort of slingshot yourself into building and get you past that, that point in the beginning where you're just stuck and you don't quite know what to do. Tip number six, upgrade your builds. This one is super important. Oftentimes it is a great one to piggyback on the precedent images from tip number five because I start with a build and I start with my precedent and I sort of build it based off of that. And then from there I upgrade and change things to make them more interesting and make it better because oftentimes the first iteration of a design, whether it be in a video game or real life, is probably not going to be the biggest, best, most interesting design that you could have come up with. It's your first pass, it's getting your ideas out of your head and on to paper, or in this sense, into the game. But oftentimes my bases start off as a simple box, a building with no walls, no windows, no designs, and then from there I kind of push and pull the walls to kind of manipulate things and make them more interesting. And so the Pagoda base is a great example of that. It started off as mushroom walls, the whole inside was made out of weed stems, and at the end of the day, it looked horrible. And so slowly, I upgraded the floors to burr floors, which looked nicer. I added lighting. I slowly started manipulating the towers on the outside of the build. I added in fun little things like the sap collecting area. And you just kind of figure out, and these things grow sort of organically as you add and come up with new ideas. But if you just build something and then never approach it again, you're probably not going to have the best build that you could and oftentimes I find that many people build something and then they don't like it it didn't end up where they want so they tear it all down and that is the worst thing you could ever do in a build design is not a just do it and it's perfect it never works out that way you have to make small adjustments you have to be flexible and willing to change things but I always suggest Never, never, never delete something. There's some good aspect of that build. Maybe a lot of it isn't working for you, but a certain part of that is going to work. It is a good idea, and you just have to manipulate and change the design of the rest of the build to sort of match that level or match that design of maybe the one little area that is working. But it's easier to upgrade a base than it is to tear it down and start from scratch. And so I always suggest upgrading little things here and there. Don't be afraid to add more materials. Don't be afraid to upgrade it once you unlock burrs and those sort of things. You don't have to build with a specific material in mind, but oftentimes things look better as you just add little details here and there and you slowly progress through the design. That's typically how most designers work. And the idea that something is finished is just not how design works in the real world. And so 
be willing to upgrade and change things as you go because oftentimes it'll make the base better making those small adjustments and building it out in a way that doesn't work oftentimes helps you figure out the way that it should work and so be flexible in your designs it can be overwhelming to upgrade and change things i totally understand that some of my bases may be overwhelming and big to you but at the beginning if i if you look at the videos and some of the ones where i've started most of them start off very very simple and just slowly get details added in little by little and that's how they turn into the cool mega builds that they are and everyone can start from a simple box and slowly add things to make something even better and bigger as you give yourself time and grace to kind of change things and make adjustments tip number seven build bigger bases this one's fairly simple, um, but oftentimes I see people starting a little too small. If you wanna build interesting bases, uh, bases with more details similar to mine, you're gonna to have to think on a slightly larger scale, and that's just because every survival game ever made has sort of a core building block that you get. In Grounded, you get half walls and full walls, and then you add in all the curved walls and all that stuff, but they're all based around the same block size. And the only way you can get more detail out of those blocks is by building at a larger scale. So those things feel like they're a little bit smaller and you have more uh, space and blocks to mess with to kind of create that interesting design. If you start on a smaller scale, you can't really add in interesting details because the blocks are too large. But Minecraft is a great example. You can't build a circle in Minecraft because you have a simple square. But if you build up to a big enough scale, you can start to mimic the idea of a circle utilizing squares. If you look up a circle diagram for Minecraft, you can sort of see how that concept of scale allows you to make those interesting designs. And most designs in Minecraft tend to be 10, 15, 20 times larger than what they would be in real life because that's the way you can add detail in that game specifically. And Grounded is very similar in that aspect where the bigger you build, the easier it is to add in little details and it really is what kind of allows you to build the interesting bases like I do. But on the same thing, if you build too small, it's often feels impossible because you have this design that you might be very interested in like, and if you try to add on to it, it's gonna ruin that effect. But if you just built that on a slightly larger scale, it allows you to manipulate the blocks in the game a little bit easier to create that detail. And I often find it's easier to kind of shrink things down if you have a lot of space or just add more things on the inside because I don't think anyone's going to complain about having two or three ovens instead of one oven. Having two or three grinders instead of one. Same thing goes with the, uh, the silk rope and all that stuff. And so you really want to build on a slightly larger scale because worst comes to it, you'll just fill the space up with more things and more chests, more items, more decor, which is only going to make your base better. But designing in really, really small, tight spaces, you have to be much more efficient with the blocks you're using, and it tends to make the design a lot more difficult. It doesn't mean that you can't build on a small scale by any means, but if you build bigger, I think it allows you a little bit more freedom and flexibility in how you can interact with the different blocks and decor in Grounded. Tip number eight. This is where we start to get a little bit more complicated and more of just design philosophies and how I make and think about my builds to make them more detailed and more interesting overall. And the key here is to use depth in your build. You could also say this is like layering. Um, it tends to be a more complicated thing and it requires that you put time into your the building mechanics in the game, learning the different materials, learning the way the game allows you to rotate and twist things. And this is where I think all of my builds really come to life. The Pagoda base is a great example. That base has a front exterior wall, which you can see that's sort of inset inside the Pagoda itself. That's how you get the crosshatch pattern. And so that's one term that I, or one idea that I uh, specifically use for depth, but also within that same wall, the exterior wall then has a vertical half wall and then another wall that is parallel to the exterior wall. And that's how on the inside, I get a perfectly flat mushroom interior wall to work with, but then the outside is sort of inset in there. That's sort of maybe a more unique situation. There's not as many specific places where you can sort of play with the depth with things on the map already. But I think a great example is if you look at my Let's Build series in the sandbox, um, one of the first episodes I did there, I'm working on the tower, and that build sort of has this plus shape or cross shape is how the 
whole kind of section of tower is created but then each corner is made of a square and then from there I inset the windows an entire block which allows me to start playing with angled pieces and that creates this huge extra level of detail that you just can't do and I see so many bases on the grounded discord and stuff that are just like flat blank big grass walls and you're, there's nothing wrong with starting there but if you want to get to the point where you can create the different details and it's really when you get to this level of design is where you can really start having a lot of fun with base building this is when i feel like bases really start coming to life and it's purely how i create the vast majority of my details by having a wall that's too thick or sections of that wall that are too thick where all you have to do is place a wall place a perpendicular vertical half wall. I think it's easier to maybe use a, a half wall specifically just because the full walls create a very, very thick wall. And so you kind of have to calculate to deal with that extra sort of space. Um, but you can create that dead space, which allows you to sort of use the angled pieces in the game. The newest build I'm working on in the sandbox, the cathedral started off with just a sort of semi-circle, circular towers. And then within that, by pushing and pulling and sort of layering the effects, I get to create this sort of like depth that's much more difficult to create when you don't have two deep walls or a double thick wall. You have to think of this um, in terms of how a legit architectural building, your home, whatever it is, is built. You have an exterior wall a gap or a void and then an interior wall and I try to think of all of my builds in the same exact way where if you can create it in a legit manner where it's built like a real building it allows you to push and pull yes you can just make a wall and then add a window but I often find that just using the standard windows and grounded can be very flat they don't add enough detail and so like in the church that I built on my sandbox build all of the windows are created by using a full wall and then having it set back and you create this interesting void and that allows you to do interesting lighting effects you can do backlighting um, it just allows you this huge level of extra design that you just can't create with just a flat wall and again these are hard concepts to necessarily just pull off right away but if you spend a little bit of time in the building mechanics of Grounded and just learning the different uh, building options you have, the base blocks, then once you mess with a wall, build it out too thick and then just remove one piece of it and put two angled pieces in and maybe make a sort of V. Those are the details that I'm talking about here and you can sort of, easy enough, you can also start with a kind of standard box and then build outwards and think of it as sort of an addition to what you're currently building. So if you start with the base sort of interior space you want, then you're layering things on the outside of the base to create that extra bit of detail. And it doesn't have any effect on the interior. Oftentimes, if you're just building with a single wall and you wanna create interesting shapes, the interior of your build just gets really haphazard and crazy. And it can be very hard to do the interior design and layout, uh, which is already hard enough as it is. Uh, so if you can keep it fairly simple on the inside and sort of layer and add additional layers on the exterior of the building, you can get really unique and interesting effects. But again, it takes time. You have to learn the different ways that you can build in the game. It all seems very straightforward from the beginning. Uh, you just build a wall, add a door, you're good. You just kind of make a box and you move on from there. But when you really start learning all the different pieces of building uh, that you have access to, you learn that, oh, the pillars don't have to necessarily hold something up, but you can add them to the exterior of a build and have those sort of interesting stacking effects. And those have depth within them as well because they aren't just a, a square column. They have ins and outs and pushes and pulls. And so it's got this, this layer of detail and I think can be best shown off specifically by my sandbox build where just the vast majority of that base has huge depth within every single piece of it. Somewhere, shape, or form, I'm either adding pieces to the exterior and stacking them um, to create that detail, or I'm pushing pieces inward to create voids within that. And that allows you to create a really fun depth. And then once you add the lighting effects on top of that, it really starts to make your builds like, truly come alive. And so this one is sort of a 
bit more difficult to do. It's not as just cut and dry as some of the other suggestions. But when you think of a building and starting out as two walls, you build your interior the size you want it, and then you slowly add things to the exterior to create more depth throughout the build. I think you'd be pretty surprised at how quickly you can create really visually interesting things. And it doesn't necessarily take this like massive thought process and planning. You just kind of build the base you want to build and then slowly add texture and pieces to the outside until you get to that detail level that you're interested in. Tip number nine, bringing everyone back to their uh, childhood educations here with math, and it's that order of operations matters. Uh, this is sort of a, I've learned through personal experience of, what, 2,000 hours playing this game now, and I've sort of figured out that nine times out of ten, if something, uh, if you're trying to place a blueprint and it keeps showing up red, um, unless you're just really trying to do something that the game's not going to allow, uh, more often than not, you probably can place that. This is specifically geared towards a lot of the interior items, the decor items, but a lot of times, like when I'm building with clipping and stuff and I'm pushing pieces into others, I found very unique ways to just sort of fix issues in the game that there's there's no cure-all or there's no like specific order of operations specifically to do here, but the order in which you place bl blueprints and build things absolutely matters. If you're building something and you're convinced that it just should work, it looks like it should work, it feels like it should work, it's probably going to work. But try placing two blueprints. If the second one doesn't want to place, delete the second one and the first one. Place the second one first and work backwards. Sometimes it's as simple as you place a, a blueprint and you then you try to place the second blueprint. The blueprint's not working for some reason. It shows up red build the first blueprint out and then try to build the second blueprint and build from there. And it's just sort of a, it's a weird situation. I can't say why this works or how it necessarily works, but I've found that the vast majority of the times I'm trying to place things. And there's a lot of interesting things you can do with the, the decor items in the game as well, where they aren't as rigid as say the walls and um, floors are in Grounded. Those things, you have to be a little bit more creative to get them to clip. But if you wanna just place a decor item, great example on my uh, sandcastle build is using the little wardrobes inside of the mushroom walls. I have a YouTube short on how to do that as well. And some for some reason, placing that in a specific order with like a roof over it, the game just says absolutely not. But as you can see in the image behind me, it's all about in which order I place them in. If I place one piece before the other, it won't work, but if I swap the order in which I place them, the game seems to break and not care as much. Uh, this works for many different scenarios, also on my sandbox build, working on my cathedral. Just the other night, just trying to place a simple curved mushroom wall and then using the new quarter triangles because I like using them as like a handrail. Um, it just wouldn't let me place it, even though visually it just seems like it should work. All it took was placing them in the opposite order of which I was trying to do. And this also works um, if that doesn't work for you, where you place the first blueprint second, second blueprint first. I know, kind of a mind game to understand. And definitely pay attention to the images and the recordings going on in the background here, because visually this makes way more sense than I can just describe it to you. Um, because it's it's one of those things that there's there's not a specific answer on how to solve this problem. There's not one order that always works. But I have found that nine times out of ten, it feels like something that I think can be placed can be placed if you mess with the order that you're placing things in. Just going to toss in one little bonus tip here. This is a great one that goes very well with order of operations because it's sort of just a way to circumnavigate the game, not allowing you to place a block that you'd like to place. Again, same as order of operations. This is not a 100% guarantee, but I have had a very good success rate with just placing blocks with this technique. Um, if you get a blueprint that's showing up red, meaning you cannot place it, I find this often is sort of the most... Um, relevant when you're building around assets in the game, that being the sandbox, uh, paint canisters, the pagoda, anything that the de developers have specifically placed in the yard that's a three-dimensional asset. Most of those uh, do not like you building in or around them. And all you have to do is try rotating the block 90 degrees away 
and then rotating it back. Along with the rotation trick, which is probably the simpler option here, you're just rotating quickly back and forth, back and forth until the blueprint allows you to place. Uh, I found another one while I was streaming the other day. This one is very simple. If the you're getting a location obstructed with your blueprint and it's showing up red, all you have to do is take the blueprint, slot, put it over or overlap it on a blueprint you already have placed, and then move your mouse and slide it into the position that you're looking to have it placed. And I found that um, when the rotation trick is not working for me, this seems to be a good solution that um, is something that's working as of the 1.4.2 update. Uh, seems to be a pretty consistent one if you can't get the rotation trick to work. And between the two of these, you can place a lot of blocks that you uh, normally would not be able to place. Tip number 10. This is for all of the people that wish they were better designers, wish they were more creative, that look at a big project like what I make or other YouTubers and just get overwhelmed by the daunting task of making a base. And I often see this is maybe perpetuated by a lot of the community in any survival game that people build in is especially in grounded when you're at when you ask the question where's the best place to build where should i build my base everyone immediately says the brawny boy bin or go build on the deck or the porch and those are great because they're safe they're removed from many things not many things can get you there but in terms of making good design starting with a blank canvas like a big flat open area is often the most overwhelming thing for any and everyone that isn't already creative if you're a creative person you can ignore me here because you can already do this you don't need my help in making cool bases uh, this tip isn't necessarily for you but for the people that struggle with that barrier of entry and they just don't know where to get started i often suggest building with an interesting place on the map by far as I've seen some cool bases on the Brawny Boy bin, so don't get me wrong here, but overwhelmingly, all of the really, really cool bases are built in really unique, interesting spots. If you want a great person to go look at, and my builds maybe seem a little overwhelming or daunting to you, go look at Burgle's Lost Logs. They have this insane catalog of bases in every single corner of the map. They have, If you can build there, they have built a base there. And it shows you that oftentimes starting in an interesting area that has maybe different topography changes can really eliminate a lot of the decision making process. The Pagoda is a great example of that. Although the base itself is not necessarily easy to build, it removed a lot of the decision making process for me in, in the early on stages, in the beginning stages of that build, which I think is where the vast majority of people that wish they were better at building struggle that's where they get overwhelmed the task seems very daunting and difficult and so oftentimes they just don't build at all and i want to help you get past that so you can build amazing things because i think there's something that you're going to build that other people are going to really enjoy and if you never do it you're never going to inspire anyone else to do great crazy things in building and that's beyond grounded grounded and that's in every game that you'll ever touch that allows you to build or any creative endeavor oftentimes most people that don't feel as creative um, don't feel as imaginative and can't picture these things in their brain i'm a very visual person and so a lot of the times i can see this stuff in my brain and how i want it to look but if you don't have that capability Starting in an area that's already visually interesting will help remove a lot of the, the difficult decisions in just starting with a completely blank slate. As a designer myself, my biggest nightmare is designing with a blank slate. I hate starting with just an absolutely blank piece of paper or a blank flat space to build a base. I get inspired by looking around a map, looking around an area, and finding the most visually interesting place, and then trying to build a base around what's already there. And that's because you have to, you're forced to make decisions. You don't have to decide, well, am I gonna build a square, or a rectangle, or a triangle, or a star, or a whatever, and it's just like endless, endless conversation with yourself of what is, how do you even start? Where do you go from here? But if you build in a place like the pagoda that's already a predetermined shape, well, you didn't have to make that decision. If you build in a place with hills and different elevation changes, well, you're going to have to build some stairs. And that's going to force you to maybe make this castle that has these different tiers and stuff. And it can be a fairly simple base overall. It doesn't have to be visually as interesting and creative as all my bases. But if you build a base that's built with the topography and with the terrain, with the assets that the great grounded developers have given us, 
oftentimes I find that it's so much easier to get started because all you really need to do is start placing foundations or flooring that follow the terrain and then it's going to say, hey, this is the rough shape you get to work with. But when you start at a place with the brawny bin, uh, the deck and the porch, it's almost too much space. It's almost too much freedom. So oftentimes I try to eliminate some of those decision making processes early on and it allows me to focus more on the interesting, intricate details of the build instead of like, where do I even start with this big thing? Or you end up in a big open space and all you can come up with is a box. And you're like, it's just a box and I don't know what else to do with it. And so I always suggest finding a spot on the map that is visually interesting to you. If you say, that's a cool spot, try building a base there. And Burgos Lost Logs has probably built a base there and he's proved that you can do it anywhere on the map and there isn't just one good spot to build. Explore, find something that's interesting to you specifically, to you personally, and that way you're already invested and interested in the area because you think it looks cool, and so it's gonna kind of eliminate some of those early on decisions and help you kind of move forward and get past that initial like analysis paralysis, which I've totally been there, and this is my number one way of sort of fixing that for the people that don't feel like they can just kind of come up with a design and have this great idea right from the start. Thanks for watching the video today. I sincerely hope that one of those tips or all of them helps you in your building as you're working through Grounded or any other video game as it is that you can build in, any creative endeavor. If you have a tip or a trick that I didn't necessarily cover today, something that you find very helpful, leave a comment down below. Uh, if I get enough ideas, if I get enough inspiration, I am more than happy to do more of these tips uh, and tricks videos for building and creative design. I love building and all I wanna do is kinda help people reach their full potential and build amazing things in games because I think it's a very fun thing to do and I enjoy it very much. And if I can help inspire one person, if I can give one tip that helps you get over that barrier that you're currently struggling with, it was worth all the effort. So if you have ideas, please let me know. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next one.